Hi, my name is Rob McAfee, Vice President of Sales here for Turnkey Corrections, and welcome to Jail Talk, uh, our renewed podcast here, and we are happy today to start us off this year with our developers, our lead developers, Eric Bloms, Sam Bankston, and then of course I've got Kylie Eckren here, our field uh, marketing manager, to help us out. So we're going to talk a little bit about jail software development and these guys have been doing it longer than anybody i know of course i don't know every jail developer in the world or program software developer in the world but these guys have been doing it forever so we're going to start with just just tell us a little bit about your experience what brought you here and and what got you into the field about uh, jail software development yeah eric what do you think you yeah. start? you're the yeah. first one here i was the first one here and then we got sam on board um what got me into it was going to school and then finding some friends locally here right out of UW River Falls. I was able to find a couple of friends in the music scene locally here. And one of them just happened to be server side developer for the team of three at the time that was handling all the technology for Turnkey Corrections. So they said, uh, we can't believe that you're studying and doing computer science things <laughs> and reading this book about the stuff that we need help with, can you give us a hand? You've got to talk to my boss. Let's see what we can work out. So, and this okay. was like, what, 2008, 2009? Yep, 2009. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Eric and I actually met in school. He was already working at the company at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, hey, why don't you come on in and meet Todd and uh, a couple of the other guys at that okay. time. So I walked in. Uh, I was 20 years old, barely. <laughs> Um, sophomore year of school, wow. didn't know what I was doing at all. <laughs> okay. Um, walked in, met, you know, Tim and Todd, and, uh, you know, they gave me uh, an internship opportunity at that point. Okay. So you interned for a few summers and then graduated? And yeah, I board. actually, I was actually hired full-time even before I graduated. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was still taking those calls okay. inside yeah. of class, <laughs> too. We, I remember yeah. I had a class together with uh, John Kay, and okay. he had thought that I was a rude person because okay. I would take the service phone calls inside oh, of class and I'd have to leave yeah. class and just get out of class <laughs> yeah. and take the phone call, there okay, get back into class and, and still go through. So yeah, I was working full-time and going to school full-time yep. and so was Sam. Yep. And, okay. um, then we finished on up and here we are. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, we call it an internship. Um, right. Almost out the gate, we were working 40 hours a week, yeah. um, hourly at that time. And then I think uh, Tim realized that that was not financially viable. Sure. <laughs> so yeah. we were quickly right. yeah, we put on a full-time salary still in school. Um, yeah, and it was it took me an extra year to get out of school because I was working sure. full-time for the company. So it wasn't until 2014 that I actually graduated. Okay. Wow. Okay. So 2008. 2009? Uh, 2010. 2010. 2009, okay. 2010. Yeah. So, okay, 14, 15 years in it. So, mm-hmm. you've had plenty of experience doing it. So, then that's a long time to say you know what the challenges are, you know what the, the parts that you're like, oh, yeah, I can do that quickly. What do you think has been, and it's probably changed, but over the last 14, 15 years, mm-hmm. what has been the biggest challenge you faced in trying to write software, write code? Four jails. Yeah, a lot of that starts with um, understanding the client, understanding the environment, everything that goes into it. Um, it's not just the basics of, okay, data structures, all right, how do we host things, deploy things, software, dev, all of that. It's really understanding the repair, the clients, the admins, and what they have to go through, what their story is, what's the best for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does. You know, when you're, when you're studying in school, I don't think... They're more or less preparing you to walk into like a big company like a Facebook and Amazon, Mm -hmm. somebody that is going to put you in a cubicle and you're going to sit there and be spoon fed requirements. You know, this industry really isn't like that. I don't even know. I I, I don't know how you would like prepare yourself for this industry other other than just jumping into it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's very unique. Uh, It's very, I guess, self. Uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Like you've got to learn by just doing it, self-motivated, mm-hmm. doing it yeah. yourself. Um, it, it's yeah. really unique and really interesting. So to, to that's probably been one of the bigger challenges, honestly, sure. especially initially getting started. Um, now that we're a little bit more seasoned, um, we don't run into the, like the, the the learning aspect of it so much. Not even so much the technological aspect of it, 
Um, Eric and I are kind of in a unique situation where we're very like broad in the company. Sure. So a lot of the challenges that we face are just like a much higher scope. Like how can we develop a, a good solid product that mm -hmm. can fit, you know, tens of thousands of users. Sure. And so I, I you know, I, I get it because I think the self-taught thing is really important. So building off that question a little bit, and you guys, you know, I think in law enforcement, certainly when I was in, in working for the sheriff's office and, and other fields, all have this continuing education. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about like what that commitment mm -hmm. is for you guys, because I know it's, I know you've gone to conferences, I know you've gone to trainings, but it's not like it's a, oh, I read an article. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite things. But the mentoring and the continuing to learn and the continuing to get challenged is huge. And it's just so fun to get out there and continually be challenged ourselves and say, you're gonna have to think a different way about this. But it started with, before I went to big conferences, these small get togethers and meetups. And then we actually took that on ourselves and started doing it here on Fridays. And I get up and dance in front of everybody and look dumb <laughs> on stage in front of everybody and try to like get people to connect or get people to talk a little bit more about these new topics. And we call it Synergy. It started as a joke yeah. and we were just, okay, well, this is gonna be our own little thing. and we made an acronym for it and we made a mascot and everything like <laughs> That's that. awesome. But it's It still carries on today. And yeah, some of the topics are dry and hey, here's a, a thing about technology and we need to review this and we should do that. But then some of them are really, like one time we took a VR headset and we had this bomb diffusing game that we played together. It's called <laughs> Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Okay. And you have to work as a team to have the bomb defusal manual. And you have to go, okay, well, this is a puzzle. It's got three triangles up on top and it's got this other thing. And then your teammates have to help you defuse the bomb. So yeah, it's just those lessons of working together, learning those things together. And of course there's certifications and learning things that we do that are very difficult to continue to keep yourself up to snuff with security, with policies, with development life cycle, all of that. Yeah, yeah, extremely important. And you know, a lot of the community stuff that we would do was pre-COVID, and unfortunately, sure. a lot of that is uh, it, it never really it never really re picked back up. None mm -hmm. of these things really started again. So you know, um, like Eric mentioned, we were doing the things ourselves, um, and then the bigger conferences are finally starting to have in-person mm -hmm. conferences again. So Eric was just in Vegas doing the um, uh, Amazon Web Services reInvent conference. Mm -hmm. and, um, so stuff like that is super important for us. Sure, um, you know, and, and just that. That self motivation, like, well, you'll keep hearing us say it to, yeah. to learn and, and grow. Definitely. So, one of the things I know from, from my point of view, Kylie, I know you've, you've seen it a lot too, because uh, you used to be customer service, <laughs> yeah. so you got to hear about it all the time. But we talk about it, I think, a million times a day between all of us and the sales team and everybody out in the field. But integrations, we talk about integrations, and they're kind of ubiquitous, right? They're everywhere, they're universal. And um, integrations, is a really easy term for complicated computing, software writing, and development, and all that. So talk a little bit about that and kind of, I know there's some challenges. There's probably some things that make it more rewarding, maybe, too, when you finally crack that code. But talk about integrations and how that applies to what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's very, so integrations are, are a large part of what we do. I mean, there are you know, weeks and months that we spend solely on that. Yeah. Um, you know, luckily we are in a position to where the dev group as a whole can kind of share that responsibility. So not one person kind of grinds on that as their full-time, their job, right? So sure. we kind of like, you know, each individual person has some ownership in it and they get to work on it. But really the hardest part with integrations, and I'm not bashing anybody here, or <laughs> but really working with third party <coughs> vendors can be mm -hmm. extremely challenging. Finding that time, finding communication, yeah. finding common ground, yes. finding a way that we can work with each other easily. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, it might not always be in their best interest to help us at that given point in time sure. in, in what they're doing. And sometimes it's the opposite, right? Sometimes it's not in our best interest or we've got other projects going. Mm -hmm. And they want to work with us, and it's like, oh gosh, this is really hard to do right <laughs> now. Um, but you know, we do the absolute best we can. Everything is always in good faith, sure. um, and as long as both sides kind of keep that understanding, right. everything everything always goes. You know, right yeah, well. we actually had a professor that explained us uh, one time what what computer science, what do a programmer, what does it mean to be a programmer? <laughs> and I like to refer to this one when I'm mentoring. 
It's like a, if you were to take a graph of a line that's going across, and it's a really inconsistent line. It's got peaks and valleys. If you've ever seen a sound wave, it's got everything moving up and down, right? Our job as developers are to take that and then convert it into something really smooth that everybody else can understand. And that's kind of the integration piece of it. We have to take the data that's coming in whatever form of from a phone provider, from a different management system, from something else. And then we have to smooth that line to be able to present it not only to our clients, but to other people as well. Yeah. And, and Sam, you had mentioned something earlier when we were kind of getting prepped for this, talking about legacy software. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we have our, we're still operating Team 2, and I, yeah. I, I don't think I've shared it with you yet, but I've, I've shared it with several people. I, but I'm talking about Team 2 and our old software versus, so that's our legacy software, I guess. And then yep. moving to Team 3, I always say, well, Team 2 is written in Gaelic, <laughs> and this is written in modern computer code. Yeah. And so you talked about interface, integrating yeah. with uh, legacy software. Yeah. Talk about that mm -hmm. challenge. It's, it's incredibly challenging. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's like trying to put a new engine in an old car. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, so... We are super fortunate that, um, you know, we have a lot of freedom as far as the technology that we that we get to choose. So um, with Team 3 in particular, we're, we're right on like that cutting, bleeding edge, right? Yeah. Um, and everything is amazing within our sandbox. <laughs> if we have to work with another provider that maybe, you know, they, they're on the upswing of their development sure. cycle or just they're at the end of the product life cycle for their particular product, mm -hmm. You know, it can be super challenging. So in our in that case, we have the super new car, and they've got the yeah. old, you know, the '92 Honda Civic, yeah. and we're trying to like get these things yeah. to like blend together. What's it's a really Tesla tough. in the Civic? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Probably not going to happen. Yeah, it's really difficult. <laughs> what about the Civic to the Tesla? Like, are we ever the Civic? Well, there. I mean, there's a couple of things that are hanging around. And yeah. that's why we need to move as fast as possible. Sam and I started when we started developing Team 2, and that was way too long ago. It was 14, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we need to move forward on those couple of facilities that we have left, and we need to get rolling. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be close now. It's going to be, what, quarter three? Yeah. And we should be all set. Yeah. So, yeah, we can't wait until that day. It's going to be a big party. Mm -hmm. We're going to throw <laughs> something. Yeah, right. It's going to be great. Well, so, okay, so you brought it up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on this next question because I want to build off of that. When you guys can get through a development cycle, like for instance, Team, team 3 is an up, upgrade or a mm -hmm. new version, when you get to the end of that, not the end of the creation, because it's always it's organic, mm -hmm. right? it's going to keep Very growing, fluid. getting better, improving. Yeah. Is, there, is there that deep breath, that sense of, okay, now we can just sharpen this pencil? I mean, talk about that feeling, like when you get to that point. There's probably a change of focus. Definitely. Yeah. So right now it's really like wide on the features that need to be created. So very wide feature and very not deep into each feature. And sure. they do what they can do. Um, their core product works the way they need it to. And now everything, maybe quality of life beyond that. Sure. We've got a couple of things that we could refocus, turn around and go, OK, now that we have the wide product features available that everybody needs. And now we can delve into each one of them a little bit deeper. Sure. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. I couldn't have yeah. worded it better. You know, if you're facility X, Y, and Z out there and you want a very specific feature for doing, you know, whatever it may be, sure. you know, when we're doing these large sweeping changes, it's very difficult to like mm -hmm. accommodate that. Or maybe we can accommodate it at a surface level. Sure. But now that we're ending that that long term kind of focus and building the base of team three, now we can dive in and really get those individual needs done. Yeah. And that kind of, I mean, you guys are good at this, right? Because you're dovetailing right into the, the next question is for you guys is kind of what's next? I mean, not just what's next for TKC necessarily for Turnkey Corrections or any of that, but what do you see on the horizon that's going to make life out of jail based on their software or whatever they're picking? Uh, what's going to make life easier for them? What's going to make life more smoother? Yeah, I'm going to start with efficiency. I okay. think it really shows after we get these big facilities on board where the just sheer number of volume of data and the velocity of things that are going by, we have to be efficient with that data. And that's, that's gonna be a huge focus moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what you've seen, especially in the last five to 10 years, is like a lot of these facilities too, talking specifically about our industry, is that they always have these like on-prem servers, right? Mm -hmm. And these big on-prem server rooms. Yes. Super costly, it's expensive right. to like, you know, not only maintain the machines, but like mm -hmm. staff it as well, because you gotta have sure. people like, 
do this stuff, right? right. And man manage it. Mm -hmm. um, but over the last five and 10 years, you've started to see some of this stuff go to like cloud computing. Mm -hmm. And like your average person, you might not think that that's really that big of a deal. But what it does is it, it shifts the budget instead of focusing on like staff and like on-prem machines. You, could, you don't have to worry about that stuff so much anymore, so now you can focus on like actually building products. Okay. So like not to let the cat out of the bag too much, but like for us, you know, we've been in the cloud since fully like 2015 or so, I okay. wanna say. It's even, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that shift allowed us to easily create Team 3. Mm -hmm. sure. Now within Team 3, um, you know, in the next couple of years, we're gonna be doing a lot of different things. The big focus the last six months has been artificial intelligence. Right. Um, <coughs> you know, and, that, and that's a very broad sure. topic. Yeah. To yeah. Well, well, you know, it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I AI's it. been around, <laughs> ML's been around yeah. for a long time, but AI as it is now mm -hmm. with these large language models coming to popularity, now everybody's focusing on it. And yeah. it, it is definitely a big part of our focus. Now. And so customer service, same thing, right? That's what we've got, when we have a computer that can take a, an email or a phone call even and then understand the complaint and mm -hmm. offer the solutions. Yeah, yeah, and you know that some of that may not be available at this moment, but over the course sure. of the next two or three years, I definitely think that right. that's something that will be possible. Yeah, they're all yeah. cooking right now. Yeah, they're all in the works. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Well, I think it's all amazing information. I, it's way over my head, most of it. But like I said, I know how to, to uh, at least work my way through it, and I know who to come to to ask questions, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, so, where, you know where our office yeah, is. Yeah, I know exactly where they are, as close to me as I can get yeah. to them. But uh, I think that's all we have for you guys. It's been very helpful for, I hope, our audience, for us, for sure, uh, to understand what we do in software development and how our team approaches what's happening today and what's going to be happening tomorrow. And so uh, thank you for joining us. Kylie, you can read that on the wall. I can't <laughs> yeah, read so it. Yeah, so if you can... You guys can find us on YouTube at Jail Talk Podcast or on at turnkeycorrections.com. All right. Thanks, Eric. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, thanks a lot yeah, for having us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Join us next time for Jail Talk.